strategies and solutions to improve your mental fitness. This is Mental Fitness Matters. Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. You are listening to Mental Fitness Matters. I am your host, Tracy Austin, and this is WSIC Radio. Happy Thursday. I hope everyone out there is having a great week. And you guys know it's the third Thursday of the month. So I am joined with my amazing co-host, Miss Erica Singleton. She is the Director of Communications for Professionals Beyond the Game. Good morning, Erica. How you doing? Good morning. I'm wonderful. How are you? I am awesome. And if you guys are watching this live, you probably see Erica and our guest that I'm going to introduce in one second, holding cell phones. <laughs> um, when we're dealing with technology, you just never know what you're going to get, right? So they're on via Zoom. We can't hear them, but they can hear us. And you guys can hear them now because they have called into the radio station. So, so glad to have you guys this morning. We also have Dr. Tia Konzer, and she is an osteopathic physician at Konzer psychiatric and we are kicking off our community read again for this month tia good morning how are you doing this morning i'm good thank you so glad to have you both um if you guys missed last month's athlete series we started off a community read and we're checking out the book the purpose path by dr nicholas pierce and we got on the phone this week and just talked about how amazing this read has been so far. So we cannot see you holding that book up right now, Erica. It's awesome. It's been a great read so far. So we've enjoyed getting into this, and we want to continue this topic with our community. Um, last month, we started off just the very first couple of chapters. We talked about what is success, what does success look like from a mental health perspective, and who am I? Very important questions as we are navigating through this Purpose Path book. We're noticing that it's calling us to go deeper and deeper into self-exploration, and we're loving it. So today for part two, we're going to kick off with, am I running the right race? Guys, I think this is a very, very deep question, right? Am I running the right race? And this book starts off in the chapter of asking a question. Um, actually, it's a quote by E.E. E. Cummings. It says, to be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best to make you everybody else, means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight. Ladies, let's talk about that for a second. Am I running the right race? That's a deep quote that it started with. Let's talk about it. Well, I think um, the way that the quote uh, kind of addresses being yourself, you know, being able to distinguish and, and be true to yourself, it's real hard in this current environment and being comfortable and satisfied with your own successes or what you would think of as success. You know, social media, um, everyone is showing what they think is success, and you're looking at uh, other things and comparing yourself to others, and it's hard, um, especially for younger people, not to want to emulate what everyone else is, is touting as, as success. So, yeah, that is the hardest battle is just staying true and really honestly being yourself in it authentically and intentionally. Absolutely. And you're right about that with social media and the things that we see, especially as you're trying to figure out the directions that we want to go in our own lives, especially for our youth. We see so much. And so you're picking and choosing. Should I do this? Is this right? So really having to kind of ask yourself and go deeper. I love that question. Am I running the right race? Because that race for me will look different for you. But if we're not even stopping to ask the questions, right, how do we know what path we're on? Dr. Tia, talk about your space in your world. How do you see this pop up for the clients that you serve? You work heavily with athletes and professionals. Um, so you're seeing people from all walks of life, probably at all transitions of life, having to go back and ask this question, huh? Yeah. I, so a lot of the times I, um, there's different seasons in our life, you know, and I think sometimes we go on autopilot with this plan of I want to be a professional basketball player, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a marketer, or um, whatever the, the path is, and we get to these different seasons, and it's, I think it's really important to ask, you know, why do I want to do this? Is this my path that I'm, I'm running or this race that I'm running, or is it something that my parents told me that I should do or that I'm doing because this is I'm going to take over a comp like a family business or, um, you know, society told me that I should do this or a teacher told me that I should do this um, or some arbitrary, arbitrary uh test that I took when I was in high school said I would be good at this thing. And we kind of get on that path. And I think it's really important to talk about, is it something that is true to my why and my own purpose? And so I think that's really important. 
and I see it in people that are teenagers, college people, people in their early professional career, um, and certainly in people in their 40s and 50s, too. So it's something that I talk with my patients a lot about. Yeah, and I, I like that because I, I was reading in the book, they were talking about a lot of times these questions can come up, whether it's in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and they kind of labeled it. Sometimes people go through what's considered a midlife crisis or they have moments in their lives that make them kind of question, you know, what am I doing here? You know, how did I get here? Um, so being able to kind of reflect, I think it's key. And I loved how Dr. Pierce started off this book by just kind of asking that question, what success is, because this p- portion of the book, as we're talking about running the race, makes us go back to see if the things that we're doing aligns with who we are and how we've identified success. Because you're right, I think success for everybody can look different. And it doesn't all have to look good. So he mentioned a lot that sometimes this might not be the prettiest thing that you're doing. It might not be fun. It might not be a lot of money involved. So success for each person looks different. Yeah, and and Dr. Tia made a great point. Um, In order to answer if I'm running the race well, you honestly need to be able to answer first, whose race am I running? Yeah. Um, And also, what race am I running? Are you in a sprint? Are you in a marathon? Is this cross country? <laughs> and then, you know, uh, have you gotten into the woods? Are you off the course altogether? I yes. mean, these are, these are really important questions to be able to ask. And I think when you ask them, my favorite part of this right now is also acknowledging, um, okay, so they ask the question and your answer is no, I'm, I'm not running the race well. Um, that is addressed as well. And I, I was really, really excited about that. Um, there's one quote in that part that stuck out to me as well. And, and that's, um, you're not stuck. You're not trapped. You're only as trapped as your brain lets you think you are. Mm. Um, every day you wake up in the morning is a new day to do something different and to make wrongs right. Um, so being resilient about it and knowing that you're currently not running the race well doesn't mean that you can't. That's huge. And what you're bringing up is just being able to kind of check in and pivot, right? That if you're checking in with yourself, if we're building in, and I love what what Dr. Tia said too about the being able to kind of do that reflection and those check-ins and seeing, are we where we want to be? But guess what? If we're not, we can do something different about it. And I think different seasons, as you mentioned, will cause to bring different parts of ourselves to the table, and if we're not kind of going through that exploration, we won't, we'll kind of cut ourselves off from being able to be fully who we're called to be. So I think that's a great point. One of the things in the book that I thought was really helpful was um, in pointing out that the race is not just a destination, it's the journey within the race. Um, mm-hmm. So having those checkpoints along your path, um, whether it's because of a season of life or a life change, um, I think it's it's really important to kind of recognize that it's all about the process of it. So, but making sure and doing those checkpoints that the process and the the race is still within what your why is and what your purpose is. Um, and like you said, Tracy and Erica, um, if it's not the right race, that's okay too. You, you can change, and you can, and, or if you're not doing it well, just having some of those seconds to figure out, okay, what am I doing well? What race am I running? What race do I want to be running? I think all of those are important things to then reflect on the what direction do I want to go this next part of the race. Yeah, and I was thinking as I was reading that book, I was thinking about how just looking over the course of my own life and just looking at some of the clients that we've served that we all wear so many different hats throughout our lives. You know, I, I remember growing up, basketball was the only thing I could think about. So uh, at that time, I was an athlete, right? And then after the ball stopped bouncing, I got into coaching. So I was a coach. And then I was an adjunct professor. So I taught psychology for a little while. And then I became a counselor. So, so many different areas in my life have called me to the table to explore more of who I am. And now in the world of entrepreneurship and as a clinical counselor, I'm still using the tools and the gifts and the strategies that I was using as an athlete, as a coach, as a teacher. Those are start, still pieces of me. I'm just using those now in a different part of my life. So I think it can be difficult because sometimes when you think about life in this book called The Purpose Path, people can find themselves on this journey and this path and begin to question why am I here? And I think we have to ask that question, but you can also come to a halt because something major happens in your life. Think about our athletes, for example, you know, whether you age out, 
whether it's an injury, whether it's a setback, whether you don't make the next team or whatever happens, your world suddenly stops. And the thing that you thought that you were called to do in the way that you saw yourself doing it is no longer happening. Then what? So as you guys are talking about checkpoints, as you guys are talking about really kind of the reflection piece, asking those questions, the seasons of life, I think it's really important that we encourage that we build in frequent checkpoints within ourselves because there will become a day where something stops that we thought we would be doing forever, right? And I think that's and really I, um, important right now. Sorry, Erica. Um, no, you're because, right. Uh, you know, COVID and the pandemic has shown us that there are things that are going to happen that are out, out of our control. And yes. so the path that you're on, you know, when you turn that corner, there might be something that you didn't expect. And I think that this pandemic has shown us that those reflections are very important. And right now it's, it's good to take a, um, an inventory of what was working. Um, what wasn't working for me, and and what do I want to do moving forward? What do I want to keep moving forward, and what can I kind of just let go of? Um, so I think that's really timely for the time that we're in right now as well. Yes, and I think um, it, it they, it's later in the book, but I think one of the things that comes up um, that is hard for women in general. I think it's very hard for women of color. Um, it's hard for a lot of people, but it brings up a really important point: is to ask for help. Um, yes. to be really be willing to reach out if you find yourself stuck in the weeds. Um, and even, even this morning uh, is a great example of also using the resources you have with you. We are a little old school and a little new school <laughs> technology. Like we're on camera, on, on uh, corded phones and cell phones. <laughs> like yes. We have gotten everything that we had at our disposal to be able to complete our, our mission. To, to, to run this race this morning, and we are running it well, but it's not in the way that we expected it to be, and it may it may end up being like that, but asking for help, using the tools that you have, that's really important, and understanding that you have a community and reaching out to it. Everybody doesn't know that you're stuck in the weeds. you got to let them know. Mm-hmm. You're right, and you don't have to travel this journey alone because you're going to come across a lot of people on the path. So I love that, being able to ask for help. Guys, I want to also go to the point in the book where it was just kind of um, talking about what race are we running? So I think it's very important here because it goes a little deeper. I've always thought about a job, a career, a passion, a purpose. I love how Dr. Pierce mentioned that sometimes our passion and our purpose may not be something that's always about being happy, right? That probably comes along with it. But there's a lot of people walking in their call right now, walking in their purpose right now, and they're not they're not doing the prettiest of jobs. I think about our service men and our service men and women. I think about our doctors, our, the people that are on call right now. I wouldn't sign up for that job for anything. And there's so many of them, they would say, no matter what's happened. I remember um, we used to do a lot of work with veterans with post-traumatic stress and have a chance to really talk to them on a deeper level. And they said, no matter, even in the conditions that they were in right now, they would sign up and do it all over again. And I look at that and I say, you know what, I, that couldn't be me. So I'm thankful for people when they do find their call, when they do find that purpose, that they're actually taking a step and walking into that because that benefits us on so many levels. And there was a, a, tra- a chapter in the book talking about the benefits of running the right race, right? There's so many benefits that when you find what it is that you're called to do, and they talked about the difference between a job which is a piece of work or a task that is completed in exchange for compensation. So, so many of us right now have a job, right? We have to go to work because whether you're paying off student debt, loans, you got to take care of your family. We're doing work because it's a means to an end. We got to get some things done, right? Then he talked about a career, which is a a cart or a wheeled vehicle, suggesting that a career kind of goes round and round. It's something that we're always tapping into, something that we're always working from. Then he talked about vocation. Vocation is a calling, something that I can't not do. He sees vocation not as a goal to be achieved, but as a gift to be received. It's not just doing what you most enjoy or pursuing your passion or what makes you happy, but it's answering a call, something that's pulling at you from a deeper spiritual level, oftentimes that you can't ignore. So there's so many benefits of running that race and so many benefits of going deeper in that question, because if not, you can find yourself 
doing things because other people have said that that's what you should be doing. And then we see so many people, right, guys, in terms of just at a loss with depression. They feel empty. They're not as fulfilled. Part of their lives have been shut off because they haven't been able to really activate them in the ways that they see they need to. I have a tendency uh, throughout my career, I've worked um, more than one job at a time. Um, I've had a full-time job and a part-time job and a full-time job and a volunteer job. And um, and a lot of that has been trying to find that merge between um, something that I feel like I'm called to do and, and figuring out how I'm going to pay my bills. Um, and this book does a great job of letting you kind of look and examine um, those spaces in your life and also figuring out um, to really listen to that voice when something does feel hollow when you have that emptiness um, and that that calling doesn't always make you happy mm -hmm. um, and that that calling there are pieces of it that may just drive you nuts but overall there is some peace found through through pursuing and and really working in what what you feel is purposeful and your purpose Absolutely. And I think it's important as well like as you mentioned Tracy the, the book points out that um, a lot of people feel like their purpose is to be happy, um, or they'll, they'll have kind of an existential um, a purpose that has an emotion. Um, but I think that it is important to know that that path um, and people's purposes um, include setbacks and trials and, and other things that are going to come up along the way that your purpose isn't necessarily, again, a destination. It's about the whole journey of everything. And I think it's important to point out the difference between job and career and vocation, uh, because a lot of the times we find ourselves doing things that may not feel our purpose as a job to pay the bills, to, to be able to, like, just fulfill our basic needs of shelter, food, water. Um, and then, but in the, as Erica mentioned, on the side we're doing other things, and, and being able to have that foundation of stability then allows us to continue pursuing our purpose um, by getting our basic needs met, uh, even though we're not at, like in the job that is our purpose, we're still on the path. And I think that's important as well. That's huge. And I think that's a big thing where it comes to setbacks, right? Where we run into those stumbling blocks, we run into those avenues where we feel like, oh my gosh, have I wasted all of this time? Now I'm 35 and I don't know what I want to do. My job is ended for whatever reason. Have I wasted all this time? Absolutely not. Being able to pivot, being able to still keep going and recognize that there's still things that you can do. Um, and really kind of having and asking for help. Some of these keywords that you guys have already mentioned, these are big pivotal points in, in really aligning with yourself. And you may not have it figured out at 35. You may not have it figured out at 25 or 45 or 55. But knowing that it is the journey and you are on a path and you're going somewhere and being able to ask these questions are key into identifying the purpose. So I'm loving how he's laying out this book, giving us so many nuggets at one time for us to think about, for us to go deeper um, and figuring out really what's important to us. You know, I think when it comes down to it, guys, the things that I'm getting from this book, it's really we're having to do deep dives into self-awareness and self-reflection because there's so many things on the outside that are pulling at our attention. I remember first starting this radio show. I have never been in radio in my life. Um, coming on with Joe Vagnone. He's a business broker, one of the best to do it in the business. Watching his style and trying to model what I was doing, I recognized that his show and my show are two different shows. Same job, right? But I have to be able to do my personality, align with who I am, and present the way I need to. So it's a lot about being able to reflect in terms of who we are. And how can we bring who we are to the table in the midst of what we're doing? Do they align, right? Yeah. And I think also really recognizing when you talk about the setbacks and the things that don't quite go right, um, as someone who tells stories and who writes stories and, and who writes about different people's experiences, um, that those different steps, missteps, and or what you considered successes um, really make the story of you. And you are the only person who can tell that story. You are the only person who brings together that knowledge, that experience. And oftentimes that is what brings forth what you will find to be your success later is acknowledging that the things that weren't um, part of what you would consider happy parts of your life um, really built the strength to create 
a happier time for you later. Um, and there are hard conversations. He says it, you know, being able to look at yourself and say, okay, so maybe I'm successful, but I'm not a success. Or I am important, but my life lacks significance. Um, these are hard conversations, and it takes a large amount of courage um, to reflect within yourself and figure out where you go next. How, how do you move forward? That's huge. Dr. T, I saw you talk. Were you about to say something? No, go ahead. I Go ahead. I, I love that. That is huge because as we're thinking about that part and, and the courage and as we get on to the third part of this, there's a big chapter about having the courage to now that we see, number one, what is success to me? Who am I? Number two, kind of where we are right now, asking, am I on the right path? Am I running the right race? You know, what is the race to be run and the benefits of running this race? Now that we identify that, now we have to have the courage to step out and do the things that we're wanting to do. And it's not going to look good for everybody. That's why we're talking about this section right here is so important. Being able to pause right here and ask yourself these questions. Am I running the right race? Is what I'm doing aligned with who I am at the core? Would I be doing this if the success didn't look the way success looked? Would I still do the job that I'm doing now, even though there may be hurt, pain, setbacks along the way? Would I still choose this? Right. So being able to take a pause right now and say, this is the moment that I have to say, this is my path that I'm on. Am I okay with where I am? Is it making an impact for me? Is it making an impact for God, the universe, source, whatever you consider, that higher power, higher calling to who you are? Am I making an impact for others? This is a point of reflection. This is a point of reflection. And so many of the people that all of us get a chance to work with and connect with have these same questions. And it's okay to have these questions. And we want to encourage you to ask these questions and ask them often. Because we are not the same as we were last week, let alone today. Some moment in your life can happen that can change the trajectory of everywhere you go. I, can, I think about how many times we run into people who um, their parents have been, whether it's killed in a car accident from a drunk driver or you've lost somebody due to an illness. And then your immediate need or thought about life changes in that in instant. You may now be on a mission to stop drunk driving or to help cure cancer. So giving yourself the flexibility to grow and to change as you grow and change, you don't have to have it all figured out. And T, I know when we got on the call um, earlier this week, just kind of talking about that, you mentioned some really good points about having to identify boundaries and really kind of setting up the values in terms of we have so many different influences in our lives, but being able to set boundaries around who we are. And I thought that was very powerful, you know, in terms of knowing ourselves. Yeah, and I think that that's key. You you know, you've got to, like I said, ask the questions of, you know, my why, and then be okay with that. People are going to have opinions about what you should or shouldn't do. And sometimes I think that we run that should race of, like, well, I should, do, I should be doing this, or my parents said this, or society says this. Um, and you get, sometimes you get to that thing that you de decide would be successful, and you get to that success, and you're like, hmm. There's, there's just not, I don't feel it. I'm not happy. And I run into that a lot where people have achieved, they've gotten the certification, they've gotten the, the job, they've gotten the family, and they're, they're just not where they thought that, that, that they would be. And I think that's the point of, like, where you have to ask, okay, well, what is the race that I want to run? And then being able to set up boundaries of, I, I'm okay if other people don't feel that that's what would be best, you know, for me. I want to take in people's opinions and, and listen to them because they may have some good points, but they, you don't have to own their opinions either. I think it's, it's your race. You get to say what it is. I love it. And we're coming up on about a minute and a half, two minutes to go. Erica, would you like to say anything before we close out today? I think what I started with in our conversation with each other earlier in this week is really being excited that this is not what you would consider a self-help book. Um, but it is much better than that because it gets you self-reflecting. It gets you to be introspective. It gets you to ask questions of yourself that maybe you haven't before. Um, and it gets you to really um, examine where you are. And I think if I picked this up in my 20s and picking it up now, my answers would still be different. And, and that's a beautiful thing yes. because that means there is some growth. 
I love, love, love that, guys. And what I want you guys to do, if you have not picked up The Purpose Path, go ahead and pick that book up. Join our community read so you can be in on, on the conversation. Send us questions. Go to TracyAustin.com. You can submit questions there. And next time, we're going to be talking about courage over comfort. I think right now we're all in a season where we're having to be courageous and step out in ways that we never thought we had to before. So let's talk about that together. And I can't thank you lovely ladies enough for all that you do. Continue to shine your lights everywhere you go. And I want my Mental Fitness Matters community to shine bright like the stars that we are. Can't wait to see y'all next week. Mm-hmm.